Nebraska Department of Natural Resources. Tom is a native of Creek, Nebraska. Uh, went to the University of Nebraska and got his engineering bachelor's and master's degrees. Worked for the Department of Natural Resources and then in the private sector for a time. Started the, uh, was a founder of the uh, Flat Water Consulting Group and operated that for a number of years and then became director of the Department of Natural Resources in 2018, is that correct? 2020. 2020, I'm staying, time flies when we're having fun. So, Tom Riley, director of the Department of Natural Resources is gonna tell us about some new water resources projects and activities in the state. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody for having me here today. And uh, some of you may have seen a little bit of my presentation before, but uh, there's some newer pieces and I see a lot of new faces in the crowd as well, so uh, feel free to stop me anytime you have a question. So as John said, uh, I've been with uh, DNR now for a little over two years, and uh, Governor Ricketts asked me to do this job at the same time I was asked to do it. it never really was the right time. Um, I decided a uh, third time I better probably say yes or I won't get asked again. And I'm glad I did. Um, it's great to, uh, to be part of the department, uh, serve the state, and be in a position where uh, we can really help producers like yourselves uh, really get more out of our water here in the state. So excited about that. Um, you know what, I told you it worked. It did a second ago, and now it did. There we go. So uh, just a quick note about, <clears throat> about DNR and some of the features that we take care of for the state. We're the surface water manager for the state. Uh, as many of you know, we do water planning. Uh, we take care of the surface water administration. Um, we do have a groundwater component and we register all the groundwater wells and serve all that data out to uh, the public and all of our other state and federal agencies as well. Um, floodplain management, uh, we are the state's floodplain manager. Uh, while some of those duties get relegated down to the uh, community level, the state does oversee that program as a whole and all the federal monies that comes into it. Uh, certainly dam safety is an important piece. Uh, we look at about 125 high hazard dams every year that we inspect to make sure that they're in good shape and good standing. And then there's about 1,300 total dams that uh, we have in our database right now that we have to work with and more on the way as I look around to the few of the uh, energy managers here in the room. Um, big year last year for water uh, in the state. Uh, the legislature and the governor really focused on a lot of large water projects and um, more to come maybe this session it looks like as well. So it's, it's really good to be in that phase and certainly exciting to be part of that and working towards that, those goals uh, as a department and for the state. Really a couple of different things that uh, I'm gonna talk about today, but a, a lot of it focused on the piece you see here, securing our existing water supply, our future water supply for just not our agricultural uses, but our municipal uses, our industry uses as well. Um, I'm just gonna hit a, a note on the uh, driving the tourism economy. Uh, that was a piece that was really part of the legislator, legislation uh, last year. Um, I don't know if there's as much focus this year on that by some of the senators, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, the great thing is uh, Department of Natural Resources are right in the mix of all of these things. We've been asked to, uh, to take on these projects. Uh, they're, they're high dollar projects, they're long term planning projects, uh, but they're really gonna add a lot of value and excitement for the state uh, for years to come. So last year's money uh, really came in a couple of different tranches, if you will. Uh, there's $53.5 million for the Perkins County Canal, $100 million for the JEDI Act. I usually break out my uh, Star Wars and JEDI acronym for that and go through that, but uh, I think you've all heard those jokes before. Uh, $50 million for the Surface Water Infrastructure Fund. That's a fund that, that uh, uses uh, water or monies to go to irrigation districts, there's about 60 in the state, they can apply for that for their critical infrastructure, um, for that, for mice uh, piece, uh, critical means. Uh, if you lose it today, you probably can't irrigate tomorrow. Uh, that's kind of how we put a standard on that. Uh, so we're working with a number of irrigation districts 
Um, for that money, it's a grant program for every one dollar you throw in, uh, the state can throw in nine. Whoops, missed a couple there. Uh, there's also American Rescue Plan Act dollars, uh, 23.1 million that we have that we're working with Gary and Port Laramie Irrigation District. Uh, many of you remember the, the failure in 2019 spring of that, that facility. Uh, this would go toward the final fix, which they're in the throes of the final design for that right now. And the last piece is a $20 million grant. Uh, when you work out all the math, uh, all the, all the permutations, when you read this, uh, it means the city of Lincoln. Um, don't say the city of Lincoln, but that's the only choice you can get to. Uh, so a $20 million grant for the city of Lincoln. This is their second source water uh, component that uh, you've probably seen in the news even now, uh, this year. So these are the new authorities uh, that we were able to get from last year's legislative season or session. The 1023, LB 1023 was the JEDI Act. Uh, it gives us the uh, ability to um, develop um, studies, identify a potential lake. Uh, a big portion of it that I went to and is going to uh, watershed management in the Wahoo Creek uh, area as well. Uh, LB 925, we haven't talked about this a lot, but I haven't. Uh, this is the Resilient Soils Quality Act. Um, this stems from the uh, earlier work the legislature did for healthy soils. It's something we're just getting rolling off the ground. Uh, now we've got a plan to, uh, to work on this process going forward, and that's a five-year, $250,000 uh, uh, amount of money that we get to implement that plan. And last is the authority for Perkins County Canal. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about mostly today. Uh, develop, construct, manage, uh, own the land, the whole nine yards on that. Um, that's a feature that the department wasn't able to do before, and 1015 gave us that authority to do so. <clears throat> so this is a map that really shows the distribution of where these projects are. Um, back to the uh, surface water irrigation infrastructure. Again, there's 60 different uh, canal, canal companies that are eligible for this. $50 million. We're trying to make sure to the extent we can, some of the bigger projects, we can marry up with federal grant dollars. And um, my hope is that we can make that $50 million, maybe $75 million. That's turning into a little bit bigger challenge than I thought it might be. But uh, I'm hoping that we can get some other federal grant money mashed up with those projects uh, going forward. Uh, as we do those. Uh, the other, uh, and I will hit a few of these on the uh, lower plat lake uh, mitigation. Um, we'll just talk about this. This is the Jedi work, the Star Wars work. There's two other pieces I'm not going to talk about. Uh, work that was set up to do uh, really through gaming parks uh, out of Lake McConaughey and in the Niagara region. And uh, those projects, uh, again, are through uh, the commission and they're working forward on those as well. Uh, our part is in the lower portion of the uh, basin, of the Platte Basin, and really looks at a couple of different things. Um, the first, as I mentioned, uh, some uh, watershed uh, control. This is in Wahoo Creek. It's the uh, lower Platte North NRD. Uh, getting about 19 to $20 million to move forward 10 different uh, water control projects, dams in that area. And then there's some money for repairing a levee around Schuyler, about $1.5, $1.8 million um, that we're working with those constituents as well. <coughs> and then there's this uh, lake as an actual photo from today. Um, and the snow doesn't show up, uh, so make sure you get your slip. This is the lake uh, between Lincoln and Omaha. It's really not a photo. It's just a rendering. Um, Flat River, uh, a potential lake Next to it, maybe 3,600 to 4,000 surface acres of the plan. This is the tourism component that came out of JEDI. Uh, that's something that we've started uh, in earnest. Uh, the first piece of that is to be certain that there's not really an impact to Lincoln and Omaha's well fields, which are, would be nearby this location. Uh, but when you again, when you look at how it works and where it could be, um, around I-80 Bridge uh, up north, uh, there's a couple locations that this could, this could actually be, but a lot of work to get to, uh, to this point where you see today uh, the plane flying over. Just another rendering of this. 
And I would say on that particular project, things is a, there's a, a really bifurcated interest. You either hate it or you think it's a great idea. Um, we'll see where it goes in time. So uh, this will be the, the primary component of my discussion today. And again, feel free to stop me anytime. Um, and some of you have heard me uh, will be about this before. But the Perkins County Canal, this is a, a project that really comes from the South Platte Compact. If, uh, some of you probably know the answer to this, but Nebraska had uh, five compacts we work with. South Platte is just between uh, Nebraska and Colorado, even so the basin goes into Wyoming a little bit. Um, it's just the two states. Uh, one of the oldest compacts uh, in the country. Uh, anybody know what the oldest is? Colorado River. Colorado River Compact is the oldest. It precedes us by a, a year or so. But uh, the interesting history is this was started before then, um, kind of set to the side, and then Colorado and the other states finished theirs. And this was signed in 1923. Really, two major components to it. Uh, the first is uh, the irrigation season flow. This is, and this compact was really developed and settled for a Western Irrigation District who had uh, sued uh, Colorado and the federal government early on about uh, making sure that their senior water rights were being met. So part of the compact was to satisfy there was need. So during the summertime, when there's less than 120 CFS, Colorado was obliged to administer their junior users, users junior to uh, uh, Western's water right, which I don't remember off the top of my head the date on that. Uh, that's Article 4. And Article 6, that's where the canal component comes in. Uh, that gives Nebraska the right to divert in the wintertime, the non-irrigation season, uh, 500 CFS, depending on who you are. Uh, it's up to 500 CFS. It could be more. I mean, it can be more crowd. Um, but if there's less than 500 CFS of water in the river, Colorado would be obligated to um, administer their junior users. So today, there's less than 500 CFS in the river, and they would be obligated to uh, turn off their junior users, which in a moment we'll see. Uh, there's quite a few, quite a few in the river. So uh, timeline behind that, the pre-2016, really a group, uh, some, some in this room, of stakeholders, interested water users in the South Platte and Platte River Basins, uh, about the concern of Colorado starting to erode into some of our water supply in the South Platte River, and what the impact of that would be over time, both uh, in terms of water capacity and the economic impact of it. We move forward in time, about the same time this is happening, Colorado legislature decides that they're going to take care of some of these excess flows. And, and uh, by the way, when I say excess flows, these are Colorado's words. Um, I read a lot of things in the paper right now that Colorado says, oh, we're not going to build projects, don't worry about it, there only a few. Um, however, the, their plan and their legislature said that there's 300,000 acre feet of extra water, excess flows, and they're going to make sure that they use all of those. Maybe they're changing their mind. I don't know. Their written documents and the legislature says another thing. Their governor, their AG says something else. Uh, 2017, you know, they highlight this 300,000 acre feet, leaving Colorado. That's what they don't want to have. Uh, in 2019, the uh, legislature gave the department um, about a million and a half dollars to start to coordinate with the uh, other water user group and evaluate whether or not this is a an issue and what kind of action uh, we might want to take at the state. Uh, along that time, uh, I do highlight the 2019 Colorado River Drop Contingency Plan starts to come up. And of course, you, know, you can't pick up a, anything water related right now and not read something about the Colorado River and the issues that those seven states have ongoing right now with that process. And that's important uh, to the South Platte in that Colorado gets a substantial amount of trans basin water, about 400,000 acre feet a year, come from the West Slope. So they're going to be very soon they protect that water. But to the extent they can, there are other activities in the Arkansas River and the South Platte River. That's where they get their water. Um, and I'm sure you all have been to the Front Range, many of you. Um, if you could take a couple snapshots back when we used to uh, 
beat a lot of teams in football. And I would go to the Colorado Buffalo game every other year. Um, you drive from Denver to Boulder, and that was all in the country. Now it's a six-lane highway. Uh, 50 to 70,000 people hitting the front range every year, and uh, they got a thirst. And municipal supplies are becoming a real factor in taking agricultural and other supplies to make sure that the water is available for those folks. Um, 2021, um, they started to accelerate the process of uh, making sure they use these flows. Uh, again, I, I read the paper, we're not really doing anything. Uh, don't worry about it. There's a project that just got a, a approval the other day. It's called the NIST project. I'll show it here at the end. A uh, project that uh, takes water from the west slope and puts it in a reservoir similar to Horse Tooth, if you're all familiar with that. Uh, moves uh, seven miles of the federal highway. Uh, took a lot of years to get permitted because of that. Uh, had archaeological issues. Um, but it also uh, takes about 37,000 acre feet of native south platte flows. Flows that would be coming to Nebraska. Again, uh, Colorado, don't worry about it. We're not doing anything over here. Um, 37,000 acre foot, that's 10% of the goal, I guess, is a 300,000 acre feet of water. Uh, 2022, uh, last spring, it's hard to believe, really January 10th, the governor of uh, the AG uh, announced that uh, we were going to pursue development of construction of the Perkins County Canal. Um, and they passed, of course, with the uh, LB 1015 and 1012, which is the budget bill that gave us some money to start to look at. Um, I never get tired of this graph. It really does illustrate uh, a couple of different things as you start over in the right, the left hand side. Uh, this is the water that Nebraska thought they agreed to. Uh, you go across uh, kind of what we really ended up getting. Um, the near -term, term goal of starting to use some of that water by Colorado. And the last little graph, uh, you can probably see that. It says 47,000 acre feet. So 47,000 acre feet is 120 CFS. Uh, multiplied by the irrigation season, um, those days, and you get 47,000 acre feet. The last what Colorado says that they think that we should get 47,000 acre feet. I don't know. That's that is less than uh, I think any of our expectations and any of our hopes. And if we have that little water coming into this basin, that means there's more demand on the North Platte River. And we saw the demand on that system that many people right here in this room rely on every year for recharge, for irrigation, all those components. So uh, I don't know where we'll get the water if that would really happen. Uh, they continue to plan these projects. Uh, again, they don't worry, we're not gonna do them all, but they're gonna do some. They're gonna keep doing it. So this is the uh, time is of the essence uh, component to this project and its needs. Just an example of what the South Platte River, North Platte River, uh, all these components really affect. It's our agriculture, it's our municipal needs, our uh, industrial needs, uh, the hydropower needs of Central and MPPD and, and everyone else, the green power. Um, it's our environmental needs. This water we, we've signed up as a state for the center part of the state where we've got an environmental commitment through the uh, Platte River program to maintain a certain level of flows, and that puts an additional demand on Nebraska's water resources. We're the ones that primarily come up with a lot of that water. And of course, uh, uh, even on the east side of the state, the missile supplies of Lincoln and Omaha. <clears throat> Last year, the river dried up between Duncan, so what's, what's the impact? Well, if we have less and less water, the river's gonna dry up even more often at those locations, and that's less water that gets downstream. And while the uh, Lower Platte River has most of their water coming from the Loop and Elkhorn systems, uh, there's still seven to 10% of it that originates just not from the North Platte, South or, uh, Platte River, but 7% from the South Platte River itself. Um, I don't know, that's a lot of water to me. When you look at it, uh, one way to look at that is Lincoln in 2012, and one of the reasons they're looking for a secondary water supply uh, flows got below 250 CFS in that lower section. That's pretty dry. And at that time, that really starts to impact the recharge component of Lincoln's well system. 
Well, when you quickly scratch out what 7% of the water is, it turns out it's about 250 CFS. So that's a threshold that Lincoln doesn't want to go under. So it seems like we better try and protect that amount of water that's coming in. Um, I use this graph a lot. It comes from Colorado. It's a good one. It has a lot of text. You don't need to see it. But uh, uh, most people in this room are going to understand uh, why I'm going to show this. It's really about return flows. And so if you look at the, the graph here, and the importance of the South Platte River, it is built on return flows. And in this example, 20 CFS in the river. Uh, we've diverted over here in a canal. There's 10 CFS. It gets diverted. Uh, 10 running down the stream yet. Six is used consumptively here, but four of it returns. And now there's 14. There's less water in the river, but it's still moving downstream, still available for the next user downstream. The South Platte River is a return flow compact. Return flow in the sense that uh, we want irrigators in the lower portion of Colorado to be using that water, putting it on their lands and having it return to the river. That's what we agreed to. And that's the part that isn't happening anymore. That's the water that's being intercepted. Those return flows that we were counting on to be able to be certain that we had 120 CFS in the summertime. That if we chose to build a canal, we would have 500 CFS or more in the wintertime. That's what builds that water supply. So what's happening to that water supply? Uh, the compact really defines two different pieces. Uh, there's District 64, this is the lower section. This is a section that would be administered by our water right um, for the, uh, the wintertime season. And then there's the upper section. This is a section that Colorado says, hey, Nebraska, uh, don't worry. We're going to use all that water, but don't worry about it because water gets pulled out of here, put in reservoirs that you see along here, and put on this land. And that replies, develops the return flow of water that you'll be able to access both in the summer and the winter. So yeah, we agree to this Colorado. Uh, you can use the water upstream. But the expectation is that the water that does come down is available in the form of return flow. Uh, I read from Colorado's AG this last week. Well, we could use all that water upstream. I don't know what Nebraska's talking about. Well, sure, you can. It says so right in the compact. But you also agreed that the return flows would just not keep coming that the land and milk and honey would get better. It won't be 120 CFS, it will be more. It won't be 500 CFS, it will be more. That's from Colorado, not from Nebraska, but that is what we agreed to. But here's the impact. There's a, almost 1,000 high capacity irrigation wells in the lower section. Uh, those wells pump during the irrigation season and they have depletions. We all have dealt with that in our own state and we have a way of dealing with it. In Colorado, their way of dealing with those depletions is that they have to put it back in the water to the extent that your well impacted the river flow, depleted the water, you have to put it back. So uh, they put it back in the processes they have, or say they do, but they divert the water in the wintertime to do so. That's how they cover their depletions. So about 110,000 acre feet of pumping and groundwater in the lower section occurs during the irrigation season months. Then in the non-irrigation season, there's all these different projects that you see here. All these yellow dots, about 500 that are either ponds, maybe drive on I-76 and wonder, who the hell's putting water in November and December in these ponds? Well, those are Colorado irrigators putting water in ponds and magically that water seeps into the ground. Um, I don't know how they take care of their losses for this, but it seeps into the ground and comes back to the river at exactly the same time it would have had they not pumped. I don't know if that really happens. Um, and in fact, this past year, uh, Western Irrigation Canal uh, got far less than 120 CFS, so, so far less that they weren't even able, able to deliver to their entire district for the first time ever. So I'm not sure that system works. And again, this is water that they can divert in the winter time that are junior. All these wells are junior to our water right, our 1921 water right. Uh, that ends up being about 100,000 acre feet as well. When you put those together, um, and if we were able to put a column in the river, 
today, that'd be about 270 CFS that Colorado is able to divert, but they wouldn't be able to. They'd be in the river and it would be for our use. So these, these are some of the projects. Here's the uh, uh, NIST reservoir I talked about. It takes water from the west slope, stores it, and takes about 37,000 acre native flows um, that were coming down the river that won't be anymore. The, the idea of Lake Mead here is the connection that there's a lot of pressure for Colorado to keep their water source. Again, the Front Range has a huge demand and they have to uh, make sure that they're protecting that. So the Perkins County Canal, uh, just a, a mock-up of where we might be. Uh, the uh, compact talks about diverting from a town of Ovid, a small little bird. Um, I never get tired of this joke, it's just too good. Uh, next time you roll off the interstate at Ovid, if you look, uh, somebody's classically added a C to that town, so COVID. So. <laughs> then nobody's changed, I was just there a couple months ago, still there. Uh, we would take water out of the river, divert it, and store it in uh, a reservoir system here, and then redeploy that just like we do in our other reservoir systems um, the next season or seasons for uh, purposes, and the purpose of this would be a beneficial use for irrigation. So there's some, some work we'll have to do as a state to be sure that that water that is stored is used for irrigation, not new irrigation, but to support all the other irrigation has come online since this compact, um, which is a lot, hundreds of thousands of acres. So we had to do a report. As part of our legislative mandate last year, uh, the department was required to uh, put together a report. We used an independent contractor to do so. They completed that report this past December and presented that to the Appropriations Committee. They asked us to do uh, really four things. Look at, is there water there? Uh, how much, and uh, how much would this cost, what are the benefits, and what are the timelines. So four things that the contractor looked at, and uh, a lot of words here, but um, this is right out of the report. It's on our website if you ever want to look at it. So it's an interesting report to do, but uh, uh, I love this piece. Uh, Nebraska's water supplies are sac sacrosanct. They are. I mean, this, Nebraska is built on water. Water drives the whole show here. Um, and that's what gives us our economic output. Uh, no doubt about it. Water derived from Nebraska's river systems enables Nebraska's agriculture to help feed the world. Yeah, we can't argue that. That's a, um, it has sophisticated hydropower systems, ethanol production, municipal growth, provides sustenance for the species and their associated habitat. Water supplies from the South Platte River are integral to Nebraska's success. No, no doubt about it. Remember the picture I showed with the state and all the different resources that use the water that we're getting now that we may not in the future. Uh, the second part of that report, uh, it's the second paragraph, and in their uh, executive summary, uh, really defines what we're up against. Nebraska has and will continue to increasingly lose water supplies from the South Platte River. So all the economy, all the things we've done, all the investments we made, um, we're not going to have the continued benefit of those if we lose this water. We preserve our right to be able to uh, take supplies if we build a canal. We have to build a canal to do that. That's what the compact clearly says, uh, to be able to take our 500 CFS. It's great though that we have a tool. I look at the other states, Colorado River, they don't have anything. We've got something we can at least do to help Nebraska. Colorado uh, is using current plans to accelerate its use of water that is historically near Nebraska. Again, the benefit of, of this is keeping the water we already get, making sure it's there, and probably bringing more water in when those juniors are not able to divert at times that we have an administrative call, which again would be today. We would have that call on if the canal was there. So you can read the rest of it, but uh, a really uh, highlights the, the issue, I think, about uh, why we need to do this now. Um, you know, I get asked a lot of questions, well, why have we waited 100 years? It was a good one, right? Uh, things didn't always line up. Number one, we were getting the water, so not really necessary to do it. But then in the early 2000s, Colorado did change the water law, uh, became less of a paper exercise, 
and they made producers offset their depletions um, for real. And that for real is what's starting to impact the river now. If they can divert water in the irrigation season to uh, cover their sins, or in the non-irrigation season to cover their sin of the irrigation seasons, that's water that otherwise would be available to the city of Nebraska. So primary conclusions, um, Colorado continues to uh, pass legislation. I, I can't hardly wait to see what's going to happen this year. Uh, I'll guarantee they'll have more money to build more facilities and continue to try and store water as quick as they can. Um, we can only stop it if we build a canal. Uh, I want to share with you this quote right here. Um, I also get asked a lot of questions. Well, can't we just ask them to make sure that we get 500 CFS? And for those of you who know the, how the prior appropriation system works, um, you have to have a beneficial use. The compact says the beneficial use comes from Nebraska's diversion of the water into the Perkins County Canal and setting it up for beneficial use down, down the road. So uh, I did send a letter to the state engineer of Colorado. I said, uh, Dear Mr. Ryan, I'm asking you to have uh, priority administration to our uh, 1921 right for 500 CFS as there is 500 CFS less than that in the river right now. Um, please do so. And two days later, uh, two days later, I got back a nice letter that said this. Because Nebraska has not constructed the Perkins County Canal, there is no basis for Colorado to administer junior water appropriations in the lower section of the South High River. So there, I asked and they said no. Um, we have to build this if we want the water that we have a right to have and deserve for our, our users. Uh, if the canal is operating today, this is a question, is there water? Um, uh, in my opinion, these guys that did this work were pretty conservative, but you know, on average, 100,000 acre feet of water a year. Um, I, see, uh, I see Devin in the crowd, 100,000 acre feet of water, that about a true system uh, would you use in a year for irrigation? Deliveries, it'll take care of it. Yeah, that would take care of it. So that's a good way to, to think about this. Or the alternative is, if we don't have that 100,000 acres, it just arose. Um, I don't know, are, you, are we going to shut down central system because we can't get all the water out of the river all the time? Or so what acres are we going to have to uh, start to restrict, give up, because we don't have enough water in the state to keep the irrigation supply and demand that we need? Uh, the canal's cost effective. They did a cost uh, benefit cost analysis, uh, came up with uh, that range that you see there. So about a, a one and a half to benefit cost ratio uh, for building the project. So what are we doing now? We've, we've, we've uh, completed this report, um, <clears throat> done that component of it. We have been seeking options of, with Colorado landowners of, along what we think will be the route of the canal. The, uh, the other piece that the legislation last year did restricted us to not be able to buy land uh, anywhere. We could only use the money to uh, get an option for land. Um, so we reached out and uh, met with a number of landowners, about 30, and continue to work with them. Uh, we have one that's interested in an option uh, that we're still entertaining. Uh, the others, uh, we had a lot of interest. The others got scared away when their uh, their Colorado legislature, the person that represents part of the lower section, um, we learned to uh, met with them and asked them to not participate in this option program with Nebraska. Now the other interesting thing, we hope to have a, a willing buyer, willing seller, uh, with Colorado and certainly the lands in Nebraska. But uh, the fascinating thing about this uh, compact is it gives the state of Nebraska the right of eminent domain application in Colorado. Colorado gave us that. So if we uh, can't work out an arrangement with these folks, um, again, don't like going there, but we could if we need to with the eminent domain. Uh, so we continue to uh, coordinate with our downstream user groups and make sure everybody's aware of where we're at as we're moving forward with this process. And uh, we'll obviously want to do that moving forward. I continue to have conversations with, with Colorado to let them know where we're at. We're trying to be as transparent as we can uh, about the project and what we're doing. Uh, we put a lot of this information up on our website. Um, so if you ever want to look, DNR's mean DNR.gov. Uh, Nebraska DNR. You can go there and find a lot of this data there. Uh, we also uh, continue to have conversations with our environmental partner, the program, um, to let them know where we're at in this process. Is 
that leaves us as what do we need? Well, we need full funding, and the governor and his budget um, put out it would be the full funding for this, uh, and would be put into the Perkins County Canal Fund and allow us to go forward on the uh, construction and design, design construction of the project. Uh, we also need to have the appropriations language revised. This is the language that came out of the appropriations bill that really put strings on how and where we could use the water. And that's what restricts us to having options only. Obviously, we can't build the project with, with options. We need to be able to um, buy our own land to be able to operate the project. So uh, those things are in the, budget, the uh, governor's budget bill to take care of. Um, there will be about $628 million. I know it's a lot of money. Um, I think, uh, again, I keep pointing to Devin. I think, Devin, if you uh, rework the numbers from uh, what the uh, cost of the lake was and put those into today's dollars, this is just what it costs. This is what things cost. And it doesn't help that we have all inflationary pressures as well. So that's all I have. Um, a lot going on uh, with the legislature on other demands. Uh, more water dollars. Uh, there's several bills out there that, that we'll have to see where they end up. But um, it looks like the uh, the 49 down there are going to be battling out for uh, who gets the money uh, again, just like last year. So with that, I take any any questions. Question from Tom. Yeah. Great. Right. Uh, what's the water quality coming in on the South Platte? So the question is, uh, water quality in South Platte, and it's a great one. I don't often talk about it, but um, it's uh, been degrading because of the lower water volume. So uh, Colorado actually, their uh, USGS and the state of Colorado did a study on that, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, metals, salts coming in there. So uh, that's a concern, too, that that water quality is uh, going down. How many acres are there, do you need? So, how many acres? Uh, I'm not sure I'm tracking the question there. You make that water come in and Ah, gotcha. So, uh, the, the, the corridor for the canal that we need to go. Um, so, we're looking at about a 300 foot width for planning, uh, about 15 miles. I don't have the acre number off of my head, what that would be, but the corridor that we bring in would just be that narrow, the narrow route for the canal itself. And if you've driven that part of I-76, there is some uh, productive and irrigated acres in the alluvial system, but then you get on the, the south side of the river, and that's, that's primarily the rangeland that you're going through there. Yes? Can it be a pipeline, or does it have to be a canal? So the question is, does it have to be an uh, open channel canal, or it could be a pipeline? Um, one thing I didn't mention is that we are have interviewed and are going to bring on a design engineer to help us determine the best value for some of those decisions if we have to go all gravity, um, or could we use a pipeline and pump? So, wait and see on that one. Yes? So after the water gets into Nebraska, what are the options? Can we put it in general directly back into the flat, or is it looking at a lake there, or is, is there a Irrigation system already. Yeah, yeah, so the question is what do we do with it once we well, once we get it? We do have a uh, plan, a couple of reservoirs to store the water that we'll be able to repurpose it. We want to make sure that we um, do an operations analysis to take advantage of what the question just uh, said is we have some infrastructure out there. Um, whether it's Western Canal, whether it's uh, MPPD, Central System, we want to make sure that we're uh, using it in the most efficient fashion and using some of that existing infrastructure so that we can bring it down to the river. But it is a Platte River project, right? This water has to be for the, for the Platte River system. doesn't mean that some won't spill over to the south and the Republican and other areas through natural processes. Yes? So the question about eminent domain, where does it apply? I think the pretty plain read of the uh, compact is in that lower section uh, where the canal might have been thought to be. So that's the only place that we could use that eminent domain on the south side of the river. South side. Yeah. Just to follow up on that. So. 
Does Nebraska have that ability to do it on our own, or do we have to rely on Colorado to do it for us? So John's question is, uh, do we have to rely on Colorado? Well, to the extent that we have to go through the court system, um, but we've, we've looked at that process. It's actually a lot more straightforward than it is here, and this is it's pretty straightforward here too. So we would use their their court system, and you all know how that that works. You can't arrive at the agreed price, then uh, you know you're, you know where you end up. And Colorado would immediately take possession in that kind of dispute as well. So that's a little bit different than maybe what's here. So that would be the Colorado State court system or federal court it's, system? It's the, their district court system, as I understand. Again, hopefully we don't need to go there, but you know, big projects, especially linear transportation projects, Sometimes you end up with uh, needing to use the eminent domain future. Yes? So, if it's completed, does this canal belong to the state? Who's going to manage it? Is, cause, is there another irrigation district? Is the state getting in the irrigation business? What's, what's the end game if it's built? Yeah, so the question is uh, who owns it? And it's the state of Nebraska project, it's the state of Nebraska's water right. LB 1015 gives that authority to the department to own and operate. Um, having fleshed out that operational piece and if we would engage with uh, some of the experts, uh, some in this room, to have them maybe operate it. But it'll be the state's decision on where and when the water goes and where it goes. The department, you mean the DNR? DNR. Any other questions for Tom? Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Good information about an important topic. Thanks.